about Vega is she she's so interesting because she bends a lot of ethical, like she bends a lot of yeah. rules. Can you talk about how she balances, you know, her career with kind of her personal motivations? Yeah, I think you know her career and her personal motivations, and to some degree go hand in hand and then also to another degree they're separate because you almost have to bend one to accomplish the other in the appropriate manner so to speak um, but I think what really drives Vega is she has such a deep sense of purpose she feels like she knows what she's supposed to be doing um, she knows the difference that she wants to make she knows what's important to her what's valuable to her um, she knows what her priorities are and in pursuing that specifically sometimes she bends other things because she believes that that is the right thing even if it's not the appropriate thing so to speak um, so that's kind of really what, what drives her personality is, is trusting herself and um, and that sense of purpose that kind of comes first before everything now, Agatha has had visions of Vega before. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah, Agatha has had visions that Vega was going to be a part of putting them back into the milk bath. And uh, I think for Vega, it's that feeling of, I know for a fact I would absolutely never do anything like that. But you have someone who is a psychic, in essence, that sees things before they happen, and pretty much almost everything that they see is exactly true to what it is. Granted, there is that minority report, and I think that Vega would like to believe that she exists in the world of that minority report where it's not going to happen and maybe what she's seeing is not exactly what she thinks she's seeing or maybe there's a good reason for it or whatever it may be. Um, what it actually is, I can't tell you. <laughs> but it's uh, it's going to be very good, worth, worth coming full circle. Your character is at the center of a lot of complex, kind of conflicts in relationships. Yeah. Uh, what what do you think is the most interesting relationship that Vega has? <clears throat> I think her and Dash, uh, because you don't know what it is. I think with, with Blake, you know that there's a history there. You don't know where it could go from here or now. Um, you see that they care about each other, that there's a friendship. You don't really know what the future holds for them, but at least you have a clear sense of there was a history, and now there's a friendship, and there could be more. Um, with um, Arthur's character, you know that there is an attraction, and you don't have no idea where that's going to go either. And then um, with Dash, I think the, the interesting part about their relationship is you can't really put your finger on exactly what it is. It's, it's a partnership. It's a friendship. You know, you saw in episode four where Vega was a little bit jealous and you couldn't quite put your finger on why. Is she jealous of the girl? Is she jealous because he has a girlfriend? Is she jealous because she likes him? Is she jealous because she's territorial of her partner? Or is he like a little brother that she wants to protect? And so I, I think the complexity of their relationship makes it really interesting. Can you talk about working in that fantastic precinct set? It's crazy. We were waiting forever to, for it to be built. Like, we were shooting episodes three, four, and five, like, all at the same time because we could only shoot out everything else because that set wasn't built yet. So by the time it got built, we were like, okay, let's go see what this thing looks like. It better be amazing. And it is. And they did such an incredible job. The detail is amazing. And, and I think it, it makes our job easier because it just drops us into that world, literally. We walk on set and we're there. Vega has learned to kill her father, but rather than closing that door entirely, it kind of right. opened up a lot of other questions. Can you talk right. about like her next steps? Uh, in, yeah, in yeah. Well, I think you know, Vega definitely thought that finding her her father's murder. Um, was coming to a close when she found out about Dean and Winter and she knows that this is the woman who actually shot him. But in essence, she's not really the murderer because she was, you know, a junkie at the time and because she was hired and because she was young and I think Vega has a, a good sense of, okay, this is not who I'm after. Who I'm after is the person who put her up to, the, to it because this is the person who set out to kill and get rid of and intentionally ruin his life and in essence ruin mine and my family's. So, um... I don't know what happens next. We I haven't seen that script yet, and um, I, I'm not sure like who the killer is or where it came from. But I know that it has kind of opened up this whole can of worms to figure out how high up does this actually go, and is this a part of everything else that's going on around us currently? So will that be answered same. by the end of the season? I don't know. I haven't read episode ten okay. yet. <laughs> can you um, can you talk a little bit about? Um, 
Blake finds out the truth about Dash and yeah. how that kind of changes the dynamic. Yeah, well, initially, the dynamic between myself and Blake and Dash was that me and Dash, you know, were doing what we were doing illegally off road, quietly behind Blake's back. And um, that main reason was because I know that Blake is very by the book and um, very kind of hard nose when it comes to that. So I didn't want to put myself in a position, or Vega didn't want to put herself in a position to where he might turn her in or turn Dash in or whatever it is. So when he does find out, I think you see it shift dramatically because you realize that Blake's history, his upbringing, um, Mm. I don't want to give that the way. That's the next episode. Okay, I'll get. I'll put it. We know he has a purple heart and all that. Yes, he has a very interesting backstory for um, what happened to him as a young man. That ties in very much to what happens when he begins to find out who Dash is. So there's an intertwining there between the two of them that we don't find out until the next episode, Um, and that kind of helps shift everything as. The three of us, uh, well, the four of us, Akila included, and Arthur and Agatha, as everyone's kind of being forced into each other's space to figure out how to get things done for the better of everyone because it's not just about solving murders at this point. Everybody's intricately connected to what happens. 